On this video, we're gonna show you how to use OxyTech products to clean and protect your metal. Hi, Scott from OxyTech here. Um, I have two products that I want to introduce you to today, uh, Antiox and EasyForce. We've had both of these in the market for a few years now, two very different uh, uses. Uh, but I want to elaborate more on uh, where you use them and how to use them correctly uh, to give you the best surface prep. Uh, Antiox is our de-ruster, de-greaser, phosphator, all in one. It's good for uh, metal conditioning to, to really give you a good surface to then be able to work on, um, get rid of a lot of the surface rust that builds up over time. Easy Foss is our go-to for uh, keeping that surface rust away. It uh, uses a polyphosphate structure that um, really gives you good paint adhesion. Uh, it also uh, works really well over sandblasted surfaces. So I'll start off by showing you the Antiox. Uh, I've got two mixes here. I've got a 100% mix and I've got a 10% mix. So I'll, I want to start off and show you the 10% mix and show you that it works uh, just as quick as the 100% but without uh, the issues that you'll get with using straight 100%. And then I'll also show you the 100% so you can actually see the effects afterwards with the excess phosphate on the surface. This is typical sheet metal that you'd have in the back of your workshop. I want to show you the side-by-side -side comparison of the 10% and the 100%, um, just so you can see how they both work and the end results that you'll get out of them. So just using the 10% first, you'll see how quick it'll work. It's just a typical green scarer, straight from the hardware shop. Nice and wet, good contact. There's no effort on that whatsoever. You're just letting the scourer do all the work. And you'll see it takes it off quite quick. It's basically relying on the contact time of the phosphoric acid in the product, uh, just working away. It's just a basic dilution, 10% uh, of the antiox straight with water. Uh, don't be afraid that you're putting water onto a panel. The phosphoric acid will actually protect the panel. What you're actually doing is that you're actually creating a chemical reaction between the antiox and the metal that's then putting a phosphate layer onto the surface. So we'll just let that work for a minute. At the same time, we'll just do the 100% mix. You'll see how quick this will work. It's the same again, no real effort. Still cleans, still works away on it. Now that you've actually uh, mechanically and also chemically cleaned the surface there, the chemical now just has a bit of reaction time with it, gives it a time to really kill it off. It's the same, we can just go back to this, just give it that last little bit. You can see how quick it is coming off. And now the trick is once this is all done, you need to neutralize the acid that's on the surface. You need to make sure that you're going over this with water afterwards, uh, neutralizing the acid. Otherwise, what can happen is that when moisture comes back and, uh, and attacks the metal again, there's an acid sitting on the surface that reactivates and will start eating the metal away. So we've just got straight water here, just a rag. And that's all it is, just to make sure that it's all neutralized. It's all off the surface. Same with this one here, just got it all off. Now what I'm gonna do is I'll run over this with a dry rag. Trick is to dry this off as quick as you can. So what you'll get here now is a direct comparison of the two. The first thing you'll notice is that yes, it has cleaned it, but as this dries out, you'll see a lot more white come to the surface with the 100%. And that's mainly because you have a lot of excess phosphate that's sitting on the surface. That's fine if you're gonna go back over the top and, and you know whiz over the surface or sand the surface before coating. But it's really gonna be a case of, you need to get that off before you apply paint. This one here, we haven't put as much phosphate onto the surface but we've allowed the acid to clean uh, the surface rust off there. And that's a nice clean surface. You'd go over it a bit more where this heavier rust is, just to finish it off. 
but all in all that'll come out really well. This is uh, just a bit of exhaust piping. Um, you do not want to cut through and start welding this. Um, you'll get contamination all through your welds. Same again, just basic 10% mix. But it's literally clean it all up before you use it. As you can see, we're doing this in seconds here, just to show you how the process is and how to do it. And you'll see it comes up clean pretty quick. Now the other things you'll come across is a lot heavier rusted metal. You get parts like this which are very heavily rusted. Same here, I've left this here. So you then go and get a sandblasted. Sandblasting works really well in getting majority of the rust out. But what you'll see is that once you hit it with antiox, it pulls all the dust out of the grain and out of the pitting. So a quick run over with antiox just gets into the last of the pitting and really uh, pulls the rust out of the bottom of the pores, making sure that it's a rust free surface when you go to use it. Same again, it's always just water off with the surface. You'll see on some of these surfaces, you'll get a yellow tinge across the top of it. That's just the phosphate on the surface, so nothing to worry about there. It's not rust starting again. It's just the protective coating that's on the top of it. It's basically the phosphoric acid that reacts with the metal and creates a, a crystallized surface um, over there to offer protection. With the antiox, it doesn't last for too long, so you really need to get some other form of protection on there straight away um, to really make it last. The 10% mix, it works quite well for soaking. This was a 10% mix for a 12 hour period for that same rusted material that we'd used here previously. It, you'll see that it lifts everything out of that grain and it comes up spotless. And that was 12 hours on 10%. For your 100% mix, this is where it has its added benefits. There's other materials that you'll come across that will need etching. Aluminium, for instance, Aluminium gets a natural oxide coating on the surface and it needs to be taken off before any um, other surface preparation is done on it. It's key for uh, conversion coatings and powder coating uh, preparation when uh, applying primers. With antiox, uh, being a phosphoric acid, it's not, a, not as aggressive as some of the other acid, uh, acid etch chemicals available. So you'll see just with 100 mix, this is working as a mechanical etch too with the scourer, just enough for it to bite in. But you'll see when I stop and let it sit, you'll see it foam up. See it all turning white there and that's where it's reacting with the aluminium to then etch the surface. We can get it to do that without having to mechanically etch it with a scouring pad, but it definitely helps. It gets that first layer of oxide off, so it really has a chance to bite into the aluminium and give a really good etch. That'll be perfect to put epoxy prime straight over you can put uh, other um, conversion coatings over it. You can even use Easy Foss over it, uh, just as an added layer on there before you start priming. Same again, um, because you're dealing with an acid, that acid needs to come off. It needs to be neutralized with the water. And you'll see that definite line through there where it's etched the aluminium, even without the use of using the scourer there. So once you actually have your clean panel, it's been antiox so you know that there's no rust left in it. We can then take our Easy Foss, which is our phosphate coating. And this is where we want to apply this, but you don't want to go too heavy with Easy Foss. It's just a 50-50 overlap, one coat. You're not wetting it up. And that's it. That's all you need. It'll dry off nice and quick like that and it's ready to go in a couple of minutes. So it'll be ready to powder coat over to epoxy prime, uh, wet paint applications, powder coatings, it's fine for everything. Uh, the way that we've designed this, it doesn't have epoxy solids in it. So it doesn't, uh, you don't have any inner coat adhesion issues with other epoxy primers. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a great insight to uh, these two great products that we've had out, uh, Antiox and Easy Foss. Uh, hopefully it's shown you that they're not scary products, they're quite easy to use. 
Uh, if you need any more information, or if you've got any more questions on uh, how to use these products or any other products in our Oxitec range, uh, be sure to give us a call or uh, drop us a line on Facebook uh, and just check us out after this. See you later.